Welcome to the Haunted Hearts, sponsored by Five Dollar Lash Packs at CVS, girl. Sponsored by what? Five Dollar Lash Packs, honey. Five Dollar Lash Packs. Is that did you did you think these lashes were real, honey? Please. I was wondering what was going on on your eyelids, but I just thought they were dirty. You just thought I put some fertilizer <laughs> down just on thought- these lashes and grew them overnight. These fucking Sleeping Beauty, nineteen fifty two, beautiful thick ass lash, Elizabeth Taylor two. Two I, rows of lashes. I just thought you needed a bath. Oh, okay. That's cool. You know. <laughs> that's I was also going for that, so it's fine. No, they look good. They look really good. They look they look very real from what I can tell with the, the darkness and the candlelight reflecting off of your your eyewear this evening. Yeah, you know. I learned from a young age that if you just keep it dark, you don't really have to fucking look good. Right? <laughs> keep it dark. <laughs> throw some glitter on it, you know? It's all good. Mm-hmm. So we have a pod light to get to. We do. I believe. Yeah. We have a pod light up top. We want to talk to you about our friend, Unresolved. Podcast. Yes. The Unresolved podcast. Uh, it's definitely uh, an awesome uh, podcast. It's kind of done in the vein of like Unsolved Mysteries. So they Mm -hmm. focus mostly on cases that um, have not been solved yet. (laughs) Yeah. They focus on like open-ended stories. So it's not necessarily all true true crime, true crime. Um, But they do like some of the stuff that they do is like um, hoaxes and basically any story that's like open-ended. Um, they kind of dig into, which is cool. Yeah, and, like, they'll go into conspiracy theories. They'll even uh, touch on, like, mythological figures, too. So it sort of hits on a lot of notes, which is really cool. Like, it's not just strictly, like Katie said, um, a true crime podcast, which is amazing. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, So I think they it's hosted by Michael Whalen. Um, and I think they release episodes there. They just started their third season, I believe, but they, you, I know that the episode schedule used to be like kind of a little like all over the place. I think now it's like once every two weeks. Yeah. I'm not really sure, but they're on Instagram at unresolved pod and you can check them out there. Yes. So what do we have next? Next, we have a little shop of horror. We have a little shop of horror. Little shop, little shop. I think we need to get a. We need to get a. Um, we need to get a bit of music to play. Yeah. For that. It can't be from Little Shop of Horrors. Well, no, I'm not I know trying to pay any fucking royalties, girl. I know that. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> not trying to get sued. Um, the cheap AF podcast. For real. Um, so our uh, little shop of horror this week is fire and lux i am obsessed with this store yes uh it's run by our friend caro and it is a it's a store for the occult and spirituality and witchcraft but it focuses on old world magic they have some banging smudge bundles that I'm obsessed with and a little birdie told me that they're going to actually be release, releasing um some new ones uh, pretty soon, and I think they have a rollout of some new content that should coincide with this episode, so that'll be really cool. Uh, but there's smudge bundles that you can get there that look amazing, um, and then there's they also have crystals and stones. The and, dressed candles. Yeah, they have dressed candles, which is really cool. And they do services, too. They do. So, like, tarot readings and things like that as well that you can sort of purchase. Yeah, they do do... Um, and spell work as well. So very cool shop. The Instagram uh, feed is beautiful. Yeah, as I was fuck. gonna say, like the shop is really cool, fireandlux.com, but also like this Instagram page is just like fucking beautiful. Like Hashtag oh my aesthetic, God. man. Yes, it is absolutely fucking perfect and gorgeous. So uh the handle on Instagram is Fire and Lux and it's Fire and L U X. Ooh, I can't believe she spelled it for you. Okay, but you might not know. Because that's like a shortened word, whatever. Fire and Lux on Instagram. Check them out. We're big fans. Yep. Awesome. So I guess that uh, leads us into uh, the meat of what we're talking about today. It does. We're done with the potatoes. We're done with the green beans. We're moving right on into the The steak. 
Yes. What are we talking about, Katie? I believe this is one of your favorite subjects. We are talking about... Y- y'all know I love me a badass bitch. Mm-hmm. I love just a spooky ass, mean ass, get by, badass bitch. <laughs> and today we're talking about the baddest ones because we are talking about Final, final Girls. girls. Yes, this is definitely one of also one of my favorite subjects. I mean, I it's no um, no secret that I'm the I'm a horror movie buff, and so I'm all about my final girls. Uh, and I am really excited about this uh, this topic today. It's probably one of my favorite ones that we've uh, planned recently. And if it wasn't, we wouldn't tell you that. <laughs> I'm just being real with you, girl. No, we thought it would be a really cool idea to, because um, we know everybody likes the uh, horror episodes where we talk about horror movies and stuff. Uh, and so we thought this would be a fun way to kind of talk about our favorite final girls. Yeah. Um, so we each prepared a top five, and we were just going to kind of go through them. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of overlap, because like Kenny and I have known each other for a long-ass time, and we're right. kind of similar. And right. so like... The things that we like will be similar, but it's interesting to see, like, I don't know. I'm kind of interested to see what order we put things in. Yeah, totally. But um, before we get into that, I definitely kind of wanted to uh, open this up for discussion a little bit between us. Like, what do you think it means to be a final girl? Like, I'm interested to know what your perspective is on that. Girl to be the final one surviving at the end of the movie, girl. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? No. <laughs> Um, I think that the trope of the final girl, it's always been something that I've found a lot of empowerment in. Yeah. Um, because I love, like, I know that it's a trope and whatever, and people shit on tropes because, you know, people hate that nothing's original, but you know, once you become jaded enough to understand that nothing will ever be original again, then it's fine. No, I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) She's still true. (laughs) Fucking jaded as hell. Y'all can tell I ain't had my pills today. Um, (laughs) No. um, Or her sweet tea. (laughs) For real. Honey, this is water over here. No. uh, I do think that it's really cool. It's something that I've always found power in. I relate a little more to the monsters. And there's some, like, gray area because Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, they're sometimes both loners. But what I find really fascinating is sort of the evolution of the final girl, Mm -hmm. of what a final girl, you know, was. And very much that sort of innocent um, moral compass, uh, which is really interesting because I think while I can appreciate where the trope has come from i do think that it sort of casts like a um it sort of casts like this uh it makes you feel like oh if you have sex then you're worthy of death it's almost like well you deserve to die you know and i just think that we've seen that shift sort of in stark contrast to what we've known so been a and most i i would probably imagine that most of the folks that we're going to talk about today would fall into that second category of kind of like the, I don't want to call it the postmodern final girl because I feel like I'm speaking above my... Uh, Damn, that would be a good episode title if I hadn't already named it, if we hadn't already named it. I mean, we could write a thesis on it or some shit. Maybe. But I think most of the women that we're going to talk about today definitely fall into the category of not, they're not um, necessarily virginal perfectly squeaky clean morally women yeah you know morally women morally women (laughs) no i would it's really fucking hot here and i think that my brain has um cooked a little bit so it's fine yeah totally you know we're just getting fucking through it okay it's cool so our top five yes let's jump right into it so who wants to go first do you want to go first i can go first okay yeah you go first i'm fucking prepared who's your number five my number five is Jess Bradford from Black Christmas. You know, that's actually from a movie way back in that 1974. I, yeah, I've actually have not seen that. <gasps> you got to see that. No, it's really, really, really good. Black Christmas is one of my favorites. It's, you know, I like that like old horror movie vibe, right? And yeah. the 70s horror movies are like my sweet spot, right? Yeah. But um, this one's really, really great. 
Jess is kind of, so we're in 74, so she's like, I think she is the one, let me just check. Yeah, she is the, she comes from the oldest film on my list of my top five. Interesting. Um, but in a lot of ways, she is very, very, um, why do I, why am I stuck on the word postmodern? Why can I fucking get, <laughs> get off of it? Get fucking off of it. What I mean is um, she's before her time. Um, okay. So she is played by Olivia Hussey, which, by the way, moment of silence for her because we lost her earlier. I think it was earlier this year. Yeah. Um, or late last year, uh, which was very, very sad. She was absolutely a gorgeous woman. So she's played by Olivia Hussey, and um, she... Early on in the movie, you find out that she she actually tells her boyfriend that she's pregnant, and then she quickly informs him that she's getting an abortion. Oh, shit. And this movie came out like one year after Roe v. Wade came out. So she's very... Um, advanced. Kind of, Not advanced, but she's ahead of her time. Right. She's definitely ahead of her time, She and she's the type of person who takes life by the horns, so to say. Okay. So... Of course, I love that about her. And she she kind of keeps that sort of um, approach, sort of. So the movie starts out, I don't want to tell you too much about it since you haven't seen it, but it starts out with um, this sorority house is getting these, like, prank phone calls, and it's, like, dirty phone calls from some perv, right? And he's, like, talking a bunch of nasty shit to them. I mean, basically the lyrics of, like, a Ying Yang twin song. <laughs> but it's the 70s, so everybody's, like, really offended by it. And all the girls are like, ah! Yeah, and except for her, because she like goes right on up to the girl who picked up the phone. She snatches that damn phone out of her hand, and she's just like, "Stop fucking calling here, you nasty! <laughs> Don't fucking call me again. I fuck you up." Um, and from that moment forward, I knew that I was. You love just her. you were like, "She's the one." I was like, "That's a that's a sister soul right there." Uh huh. So she is the last girl standing, obviously, as the final girl. Towards the end of the film, uh, when it appears that her... I'm going to ruin a little bit of it for you because it's from 1974, so get over it. Um, <laughs> she's the last girl standing at the end of the film when it appears that her boyfriend is the killer. Oh. The guy who got her pregnant. So she's like, at that point in time, like she's pregnant by him and he's also her boyfriend. And she was like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. I take your ass out too. I'm surviving. Fuck you. Um, unfortunately, though, she was wrong. So... That's not, that's not great. And other things occur. Yeah, I've never seen that movie. I did, I think, I, I think I remember seeing the remake because I believe, wasn't there a remake? I'm not sure. I think there was a remake called Black Christmas. The only really? thing that I remember from that, though, was that there was a, he was a mental patient and he escaped and he escaped by like sucking down on a candy cane until it was like till a sharp point and he stabbed it in somebody's neck, I believe, I or face. That. Oh yeah, in two thousand six there totally was. Black Christmas. Yeah. I remember seeing that, so I don't know if it's if it's similar, but it I would much rather see the original like because I don't remember the remake being that good. Um like I don't remember a lot of it, so I'm going to just assume that it was kind of forgettable. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a it's it's a long movie. Like I'll tell you, I'll warn you that in advance. But it's a it's good. It's definitely good. Okay. It's the only movie that's ever really scared my mom. I might. Uh, and you know, my mom ooh. doesn't isn't fucking scared of anything. Yeah, ever. we should put that on our list or something. Maybe we should do that um, in a few months. Okay. <laughs> in a few months. I'm not gonna say it, so I'm just gonna say in a few months. <laughs> All right. So my top five yes. or my number five. Your number five. Um is actually uh the late great Marilyn Burns wow. uh as Sally Hardesty in mm -hmm. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. So interesting, when I was trying to think of my top five, she was not someone who I originally had or thought of mm -hmm. because here's a shocker i don't really like her all that much the, <laughs> the character she's my top five but i don't like the bitch um because she really like something to do with the screaming because she does a lot of screaming yeah. in that movie a lot of screaming um which kind of begins to annoy me a little bit so I originally wasn't going to put her in my top five, but then I got to thinking and I'm like, you know what? 
she deserves to be in a top five. Not only because, like, the actress and, like, the, um, what she had to go through to portray this role. Mm -hmm. You know, I found, you know, did you know that by the end of filming, uh, Marilyn Burns's, uh, her top was so, like, caked and dried and fake blood that it was stiff? Really? Yeah. It was, like, stiff, like, starched. I mean, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, I totally believe that. Um, And then all of that screaming and then working in the oppressive, like, heat. You're out in fucking middle of nowhere, Texas. Yeah. So major props to her going through that. But uh, the character itself, I think what really um, puts her in a place for top five is her resilience. Because bitch jumped out of windows like twice Mm -hmm. one being a second story window and just never fucking gave up Mm -hmm. like that's the thing she just never ever ever gave up and she just kept going and a lot of people would not like bitch i would not be able to run for that long like she ran yeah there's no way in hell that i would be able to do that i would just give up (laughs) i'm just fucking come get me motherfucker Uh i'm done So I had to give it to her for number five. Yeah, and I think she's kind of one of the original final girls. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's she's one of the, um, when you think back on the different, um, I guess, milestone final girl moments, like she's definitely towards the beginning of that trend. So I'm glad that she was in your top five. Yeah, and the end scene is so iconic where you can tell like she is just so relieved to have finally gotten away when she's in the back of that truck and she's just drenched in blood and her eyes are so wide and she's just screaming and like laughing because she got away. Yeah. Uh, It's iconic. Yeah, I love love that scene. It definitely deserved a place. That scene always makes me cry. Yeah, it definitely deserved a place in my top five. So awesome. awesome, awesome. Number four. Number four. Number four. four. What's your, who's your number four? Aaron Har- Harson from your next. Ah, oh, only number four. Yep. She. So I thought she would have placed higher. I mean, you'll see. Um, okay. I love her. My top five is like a fucking. It, it's a hard top five. It's a bunch of hard ass bitches. It's like your ultimate. Uh, it's like your your Pokemon. It's like for fucking sure. <laughs> like... Oh my god, final girl Pokemon. <laughs> I choose you for sure. <laughs> bitches on my starting line. <laughs> but no, um, the fact that she is listed as number four is a testament to everybody on this list's um, power. Yes, because. She is fucking amazing. Um, so I remember when uh, Your Next came out, Kenny and I went to see it together. And it, we kind of, so we were interested in it from the trailer, obviously. Um, but we kind of expected it to be one of those movies that was just like, eh. Like, you know, because it kind of seemed a little like home invadery, And like, it seemed like maybe it was like riding on the coattails of the strangers or whatever. And so I yeah. think our expectations were like a like pretty low yeah and but then that movie turned out to be so fucking amazing but here's here here's also this you remember after the movie you liked it more than i did yes you remember that because i love i love slasher movies i love and and the only thing that I love more than slasher movies is parodies of slasher movies and this isn't exactly a parody but it's it's enough of to me, it reminds me, like, it's just, it kind of it, gives very, commentary on the slasher movie. It, and it kind of turns it on its head. Yeah, it's very self-referential. Yeah. It totally it totally uses the story that it is telling to point out something about the um, structure of slasher films. Yeah, and do you remember that one scene um, where it was, like, you could definitely tell there was some inspiration from Halloween from where yeah. the killer just sort of stood there yeah. and, like, tipped his head? Like, yeah. I thought it was beautifully done. I thought it was an homage to all the great slasher films. You could definitely pick out pieces that are like that. Yeah. um, That were clearly derived and that were supposed to be obviously clearly derived from other things. Yeah. Um, And that fucking soundtrack, girl. The soundtrack was amazing. Now, the the whole thing grew on me. Like, you loved it instantly. I had to warm up to it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, But the soundtrack, hands down... Fucking amazing. And sorry, but she is the, she is an amazing final girl. Yes. 
Yeah. No, the um just to say regarding the R E, the soundtrack, I bumped that Dwight Twilly band song at the beginning of that <laughs> movie when she puts the when she fixes that drink and she puts the ice in that glass and pours a whiskey over it. That fucking Dwight Twilly band song that played. I bumped that song for a straight four months in my car. I feel like just did, driving around town. Did you do People that? People were probably scared as no, fuck. I feel like you probably took a moment like when you were at home and you were like, you played it on your Girl, Amazon yes. Alexa and then like fixed your own self a drink. Well, I didn't music. have Alexa because it was 2011, but yes, oh. essentially. Yeah. But you probably played it and then fixed yourself a drink. I could see you doing that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good fucking song. She was, um, <sighs> that wasn't her. That wasn't Aaron. I know that wasn't that Aaron, was... but, um, that was not a final girl. No, Spoiler she was alert. not a final girl. She was not. Uh, but Aaron was, was very, um, she was very smart. Yes. Well, she was capable um, and prepared. Uh, I think she's obviously smart, but I think her great strength is like she was very well prepared and skilled. um, And she came into the situation with that knowledge. So, of course, her parents raised her um, on some kind of crazy ass survivalist commune. And they had kind of given her a lot of the skills to you know, defend herself in that type of situation. Yeah. Um, and of course she's the outsider. She's coming in, you know, she's meeting her boyfriend's family or whatever. And, um, so she's the odd man out basically. And then they are facing this situation where people are getting picked off one by one. Um, and so that's kind of like an awkward situation to be in. Yeah. I mean, it's always well, awkward when you meet your boyfriend's family, but when they start dying one by one, it's just even more awkward, right? right? But what was so funny to me in that movie was how shocked he was at how good she was at killing people. Uh, not killing people, but protecting herself. Oh, yeah. And surviving. Like, yeah. sh- that definitely gave her a one-up that the killers were not expecting. Yeah. I mean, because who the fuck expects some crazy Australian bitch who grew up on a survivalist compound to come in and whip everybody's ass? I mean... Nobody. It was kind of like... Nobody expects that. She was kind of, It was kind of like Home Alone. It was. <laughs> it was literally it was like, like... slasher Home Alone. It really which was. Which is why I love it so much. She was like... She was like older uh, woman version, Australian version of Macaulay Culkin. Mm-hmm. And she had all those booby traps... Girl, I love a bitch with booby traps. Uh-huh. Let me just tell you. You just like boobies. I mean, that too, but <laughs> <laughs> but I do love a booby trap. A well a well thought out and clever booby trap. Except for the inn. Remember that one guy? Uh... Yep. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a solid. I mean, that's definitely solid. Yes. So. so shout out to um, Sharni Vincent. I realized we did that whole segment. We didn't talk about her name. Um, she's played by Sharni Vincent, who is phenomenal, and she a badass. And yep. she's my number four. All and right. My dream team. So my number four on oh, my dream team is uh, played by Shauna McDonald, uh, who plays the character Sarah. In the descent, have you ever seen? Did you yeah. have you ever seen the descent? I believe I have. Yes. Yeah. So she is my number it was four. A long time ago. So not to ruin too much of the movie, but it's essentially about a group of girls who get together uh, once a year to um, do different like activities. Usually, like it's hiking. Gal pals. It really is. It's like they go hiking. It's a gal pal excursion. And in this instance, they are um, spelunking. Is that the word? Yeah. Spelunking. In, like caves. Caves, yeah. Um, and so they decide to go into this like huge undiscovered cave system. I'm going to say that was a bad idea. Um, but regardless, they get lost and they meet these uh, nocturnal like bat slash human creatures that are living in the cave system that are hunting them. Mm -hmm. um and they are the creatures themselves are absolutely fucking terrifying and when they were filming this the actresses did not know what the creatures looked like Mm -hmm. so in the scenes where they first meet them for the first time that's like that shit's real really yeah because that's their first time seeing them huh so 
there's a few scenes where you see them they are crawling through some of the rocks or whatever and like there's a moment where a girl turns and like meets the creature head on uh, uh, and that was the actress's first time seeing them girl no see that's how you get a workman's comp situation <laughs> on your hands because i'm gonna go swinging but i love that because that adds an element of realism to it and so like i yeah. have a lot of respect for you know for techniques like that yeah I love stories like that. Like the everybody knows the story from Alien where the chest burster came out and nobody knew that yeah. that I was gonna love happen. That. But what I really appreciate about appreciate appreciate about Sarah as a final girl is that in order to survive, she sort of goes a little crazy. Yeah. Which I can kind of relate to a little bit. <laughs> it's like me in the haunted house. Yeah, but you on just another embrace your level. inner demon. And yes, and there's a scene where she actually ends up killing another one of her, uh, um, another one of her friends because her friends did something shady. So it's sort of like, it's almost that instance where she's almost becoming the monster Mm -hmm. herself, Mm -hmm. or she has to put herself in the mind of the monster in order to survive. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you don't really know like if she makes it out or. If she's, like, sort of stuck in the cave and, like, essentially, like, lost her mind because of it. Like, yes, she survived, but at what expense? At what cost? Yeah. yeah. Did she really make it out or is she just Yeah. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of like a metaphor for going crazy, in a sense. Like, the further you get down into this cave, it's like the further, like, the crazier she got. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just get to a point where there's no way out mm-hmm. um so i want to rewatch it because it's been so long since i've seen it that i it's one of my favorites a lot the of the descent details is are fuzzy. definitely one of my favorites so um and it was in 2000 early 2000s 2005 i believe something like that mm-hmm. uh but yeah that's she's my number four awesome. sarah from the descent sarah sarah i choose you all right so we're getting into top three territory over here Top three, motherfucker. Number three. I'm interested. Who is number three? Who's number three? Number three has four movies. And her oh, name. Oh, I know it immediately. <laughs> is Sydney Prescott. Yeah, Sydney. Sydney Prescott. Number three in my dream team. Breaks my heart to make her number three, but everybody can't be number one, right? True, um, true. But she... Sydney Prescott is like the ultimate, like one of the ultimate final girls. Oh, totally. I think she, um, and and part of it is because of the way that Scream is structured. So Scream, we've talked about it on the podcast before. You guys know that I fucking love Scream. I think it is untouchable. I think it's so smart the way that it uses its form to comment on the horror genre. Um, I, I I just love it. I love the way that it um, fucks with expectations and the way that it comments on itself. Um, And because of that, by virtue of the way the film is structured, to be that, I think that Sydney is sort of put in the position of being like the ultimate final girl, right? Totally. And I think she excels. Um, I think... What I, what I love about her is that she doesn't necessarily... So you were talking about how um, back in the day, it was all about, you know, the final girl was virginal and above moral reproach and yada, yada, yada. And what I like about Sydney, we get a little bit of that in the beginning, but she... Sydney is very smart. She's very practical. She's very no bullshit. Yeah, totally. Um, and she she doesn't look like an ingenue. Yeah, that's true. She's not your typical, like, in the past, you have yeah. that sort of look. Yeah. That Like, Nev Campbell, nothing about Nev Campbell looks weak at all. Like, I'm just talking, like, on a facial structure um, level. Like, yeah. she is, nothing about her looks weak. Um, she's got very strong features, and that was, you know, that's part of why I love her, because, like, she kind of breaks the mold for that. Yeah, um, totally. But I think... She's just, I think Sydney's refusal, I think there's also a lot there for people who have been through trauma or people who have had 
um, like really rough times in their lives or who have faced some difficult situations because Sydney refuses to let the trauma of her mother's murder define who she is. She carries it with her and it is, of course, woven into part of who she is. Right. And it's a part of her story, but it is not her whole story and she refuses to let it break her and yeah. that is what i think is so yeah and as much as Sydney. like in the story everybody tries to make it yeah you know who her she identity. is and her identity yeah um i definitely would agree with that i think she's sort of um she's like you said she just holds like a certain there's just an aura of like badassness about her like Hell even yeah. when you first see her like and and her interactions uh you know, with her boyfriend in the first part are very, like, that in and of itself breaks the mold of mm-hmm. what uh, we've known for, to be a final girl. I just love bitches that kill their boyfriends. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this list is. No. Yeah. So, I guess that would be her power, right? Yeah. So, it's her ability to just keep it coming. Because Ghostface is interesting in that he is... It's like it's a different person every time, right? So it's not like it's not like Michael where it's you know it's Michael mm-hmm. or Freddie where it's Freddie or you know whatever. Like Ghostface is essentially always someone who keeps trying to define Sydney by right. these moments, and it right. keeps coming back and back and back to for her, mm-hmm. um, and she just fucking keeps surviving every right. time. And I'm gonna tell you what I thought that she was like. I thought at the end of like I thought that they were gonna do her in at the end of four, and I was yeah. not prepared for that. Yeah, no, it, I, I was like, no, I don't. I, I I think that would be a huge mistake from that franchise because I think Sydney Sydney has to triumph. And I'm gonna tell you what, like, why would you ever? Why would you ever go up against Sydney at that point? Like, not at all. Like, why would you ever? Don't fucking do it. I mean, at some point, I you just fight gotta let it go, man. <laughs> like, I, girl, if she stepped to me, I'd be like, "All right, ma'am, I'm sorry." <laughs> I love that. Like, I forget what's the other, like the second or third, uh, where you know people are prank calling her, mm-hmm. and they're like doing the whole like what's your favorite scary movie? And by that point, she's like, fuck you. Who's this? I've got caller ID now. Right. (laughs) Yes. She's like, oh, this is so-and-so at whatever, whatever number. I'm done with you. (laughs) I'm done with you. (laughs) Yeah. No. I think she's awesome. And two, I mean, in all fairness, I guess we should acknowledge that she, you know, she did have four movies in the franchise to kind of like grow and develop. And so she is one of the most developed Final Girl characters um, past the trope, um, I think we really do get to see her, see more of her. She's probably one of the longest surviving ones, too. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, like, first, in a franchise. Yeah, the first Scream was 1996, and the last one was 2011. Well, I mean, like, in films in general, like, through four films, like, yeah. not many Final Girls last that long. No, that, I mean, that's what I'm saying, because she was still alive at the end of the fourth one. So it's, you know, 32 years now. Yeah. God. That's crazy. <laughs> that's fucking insane. All right, so that was your number three. Is it is it really 32 years? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, it's not 32 years since fucking 1996. Okay, Katie? so, like, 22 years. Katie? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Damn. I was like, wait, no. <laughs> Have we stepped through a wormhole somewhere? Yeah. No. Ooh. Fuck. Woo. Um, so, my number three was actually Aaron. Oh, from okay. <laughs> Yeah. I figured we next. would have a high degree of overlap, so. Yeah. Uh, so, I put her in my top three mainly because of her... Um, she had some fucking amazing kills. Like, I know we're kind of going back a little bit because we've already talked about your next, but something that we didn't talk about, uh, I think was like her kills because that was something that was really, um, and just so unique, like the mm-hmm. blender, to, uh, like a blender to the head and yeah. just hitting puree. Like, yeah. I can't even. I'm yeah. literally dead. Yeah. <laughs> Liter- I'm literally dead in this blender right so, now. So, yeah, she was my number three. Okay. So Well deserved. Well deserved. Um, all right. So I guess I'll go in yeah, with you, number two. Yeah, you do too. And then we'll come back. Okay. So my number two is actually 
Gail Weathers. Oh, another Cott. Scream varsity member. Yes. Um, I think, I don't think that Gail Weathers gets a lot of credit for being a final girl. Mm. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that she, like Sydney, has survived through all four films. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, you rarely see her listed on any, like, you know, top final girls. And I just think that that's, I just don't think that that's fair because Mm -hmm. I think throughout the series, she, she's someone who you also see grow. Yeah. Um, she's also a badass in her own right. She's Mm -hmm. very, um, driven. She's very focused. Unapologetic too. And very unapologetic of who she is. Yeah. And she knows who she is and she uses that as her power. Mm -hmm. Um, and I definitely would categorize her as like a Slytherin if there ever was one. Mm-hmm. Total Slytherin. For fucking she sure. She probably did what I would do and like make fucking money off this. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I'm gonna go through some shit, bitch, I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna be on the talk shows. I'm gonna make my coin. Mm. And I don't blame her for that. Um, and and if you remember, she. At the end of Scream, like, came back and shot him. Yeah. When he tried to get back up. Yeah. So, and when you thought that she was dead. That's the thing. You always, like, I think with Gail is, like, you always think she's dead. Yeah. But then she's not. No, that's a running joke in the franchise is that you always think that she's them and finally then got got. And then she just pops right back. Guess what? She's the, the she's that uh, interpretation of the meme that's like, guess what, bitch? I thought <laughs> you see, thought you seen the last of me. <laughs> <laughs> For real. No, so, I I just love her dynamic with her cameraman. Oh my god! Movie. Yeah, god, that's so good. She calls him like what a was fat it? shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, what was it? There's like one scene where he's like fucking eating chips or something, and she's like, "Put them fucking chi-, or she didn't say fucking, but she's like, "Put them damn chips down! Can't he get up here?" <laughs> Maybe and his name was Kenny too. Yeah, no, it was great. It was Kenny great. the cameraman. It was too great. I was like, this is real. Did Kenny the cameraman live? No, he died. Oh, damn. Yep. He <laughs> definitely, definitely died. Yeah. So she was she was my number two. And I don't think, and I just, yeah, I had to put her at number two because she, A, she doesn't get enough credit. But B, I just like, she is someone who I would also gravitate towards. And if I was in a horror film, it's like, I'm going to stick with her. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, we would stick with Nev Campbell, but like, if her group was full, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with you with Gail. <laughs> yeah, girl, Gail would not cut, take care of your ass though. I know. I just love her and Dewey though. Oh yeah. I just can't. No, in the first film, she wouldn't take. Oh my care god! Of you, I but... found the quote. I found the quote. It was, um, Kenny. I know you're about fifty pounds overweight, <laughs> but when I say hurry, please interpret that as move your fat tubble art ass now. <laughs> Fuck yes. It was so good. Me. <laughs> oh, it was so good. See, that's what I'm talking about. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So. All right. So All right. who was your number two? Um, My number two is Ellen Ripley from Arian. I fucking knew it. From Arian. I knew it. Yes. Yeah. So... I love Ripley. I love Ellen Ripley. She is my favorite. She's incredible. I have a cat named after her. You do? Even. Um, that cat is developmentally challenged and definitely not as badass as this character, <laughs> but it's fine. You thought. You thought. You were like, I'm going to name this cat. She's going to be badass. <laughs> no. You know. Oh, Ripley. She's really cute, though, so it's fine. Somehow it still works. But um, love Ellen Ripley. Sigourney Weaver's amazing. Another woman who I love because in that in that movie she is fucking strong. She does not look waifish. She looks like she could beat your ass in a bar fight, and that's oh, yeah. what I and love. She's not your conventional beauty either. Yeah. Yes. She. As much as I see her is like yeah, like I think she's beautiful. Yeah. But like you know, she's not. Well, yeah. Beauty. I mean, I feel like beautiful. we're we're. Now, when that movie came out, like, everybody lost their fucking minds over her because she is very gorgeous. But um, you're right in the sense that um, she's not – we're we're sort of trained by 
the media to, you know, see. Usually it's like fair features, like really pale skin or, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, doe eyed type of like women. Yeah. Which I'm not shitting on that, but I'm just saying like it's really cool to see somebody who doesn't quite fit that mold in a role like this. Yeah. Um, and everybody clearly fucking loved it because the internet is like still raving about how freaking mega hot she is in them high high legged panties <laughs> and them high leg panties, girl. Them high legged whitey tighties. Yeah, I remember the uh, what is it the the uniform the jump jumpsuit is that what yeah. you would call it? Yeah. I just remember that like jumpsuit that was like really kind of nipped in a mm-hmm. little bit at the waist, mm-hmm. um, and just sort of like. I mean, it was very, it was a nice fitting jumpsuit that yes. she had on. Yeah, I think that movie, that movie is actually classified as a psychosexual sci-fi thriller. I can see that. Now, so I'm not, you know, this is no, um, no secret. I'm not into um, the science fiction part of horror. So as such, I'm not as well versed with the Alien franchise as probably you are. Um, but I do... And I haven't seen it in a while, mm. TBH. I, we but, can fix that. <laughs> but the alien in and of itself is definitely something that I remember from my childhood. Spe- and specifically, like, Ellen Ripley. Like, I remember, because uh, doesn't she get in, like, a she gets in a machine mm-hmm. and she's, like, says something. Like, there's a line that's, like, step away from her, you bitch, like they mentioned in Scream. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just like sort of just synonymous with like, okay, I'm a fucking badass motherfucker. Yeah. Like, she, screw you. So what's so cool about this role um, that I found out while researching for this? I, well, I actually kind of knew it, but um, I was I just reminded knew of it. it. I just knew it. Well, no. I mean, I'm obsessed with these movies. So um, she that role was originally written for a man. It was not written for a woman. Oh, wow. And so her gender is like totally non-factor, basically. I mean, of course, it's a huge factor um, put, by putting her in that role, and that's why we can kind of talk about it. But like um, that part was originally written for a male. Um, Interesting. Yeah, right? I didn't know Very that. cool. Very, very cool. Um, but she, I think what's, what's great about her is that she is very smart. She's very clever. She's very quick-witted. Um, she doesn't hesitate and she doesn't second guess herself. Um, and I think that last part in particular of not second guessing herself is really what allows her to survive. Um, when they first, um, decide to take the alien parasite, the guy who has the, um, baby xenomorph on his face, um, when they first decided to take him on board, she's like, hey, don't do this. Sounds like a bad idea. Guess what? Turned out to be a really fucking bad idea. And then the chest burster scene, um, when everybody is like freaking out and like reacting to that, like she very quickly realizes that the cat is a beacon of warning. That like the cat will kind of like go crazy when um, whenever the aliens are near, and so that's why she Fucking cats man. Yeah, I mean, so like when I was a kid and I watched that movie, I was like. Yay! Save the cat! Yay! And I was like, "Oh, she loves she loves Jonesy because he's a cat, and that's me." And I would save the cat, but she has a reason for everything that she does, right? And it's not like a lot of her reasons aren't like deep emotional like things. It's just like, no, this is what is logical, and this is like what should happen. Right. You know what I mean? Like this is useful to me, and so I'm going to take this cat, and I'm going to keep this cat because it's a tool, which is very refreshing to see, honestly, because I think women are like. Well, that's a very, like, masculine thing to do. Yeah, well, we're very, I mean, but it isn't, though, because we're capable of making logical decisions, too, that are not based on our emotions. I, I think that a lot of times women are over- But that's not the box over that, like, emotionalized. you would be used to. You know what I mean? Like you said, like, they, writ- they wrote that role for a man. Yeah. So I think that that's, like, a very, yeah, I don't know, I just- You don't see a lot of women portrayed on screen acting in that manner. That's what I'm saying, you yeah. S- when you see us, it's more, like- we're like these emotional, sprite-like right. fairy creatures that are just driven totally by emotion and intuition. And right. we do have a lot of emotion, and we do have the ability to tap into a lot of intuition. I personally am very much in that camp, but it's like there's lots of different kinds of women. Oh, yeah, totally. And there's lots of different 
ways to be. So I think it was very cool. Um, you know, I think she is a very, very important figure, not only to the horror genre and the sci-fi genre, but also just to women in film in general. Yeah, I would I definitely agree with that. Very pivotal. So awesome. Yeah, that's that's Ellen Ripley. Ellen Who's your Ripley. number two? Ellen Ripley. Oh, we we already did my number two. Oh, you did number two first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're both at number one. Right? We are at number one. So do you want to just say can this we just, together? Yeah. Can we just <laughs> say it together? So one, two, two three. Lori Strode. Strode. Oh my God. What if I had been like, what if I'd said like some other random total fucking weird name? You just been like Christy from Hellraiser. <laughs> yeah. What like, if I had done that? No. Oh, I should have. No, I would. No. I, <laughs> I mean, no shade to Christy, but Lori Strode no, 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 is no, no, the no OG final yes. girl. So the best. She definitely is the best. And I think that. She is a she is a scream queen. She mm-hmm. is a final girl. She is I mean she's literally a scream queen cuz she had that show. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean Lori Strode's character as we know, this was like the first like this is this was Jamie Lee's first role. Um and it while there are a lot of like the old school old school tropes that we see, mm-hmm. because you know she is very virginal, she's very like nerdy in a sense. Mm-hmm. She's all about the books and the learning, and she is like a very mature character mm-hmm. for her age to be sixteen years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. There's just something that is so powerful about her character in the sense that she she gets to be a lot like she grows a lot and I think she gets we see a lot of all of the different types of final women in her Mm -hmm. as we go throughout the franchise yeah because you've got a Halloween and then you have Halloween 2 and then you have H2O. Right. So you can kind of see her progression. Right. She um, encompasses all of that because like in Halloween 1, like, yes, she's that, she's that girl, right? She's that she's girl. She's that girl. She's that girl. But she reminds me a lot of Aaron, like in the scene with the closet. Yeah. So she fashions a weapon out of a fucking yeah. hanger. Yeah. Well, she's a Girl Scout. You know, yeah. they mentioned that very early on, and that's part that's part of Lori's character that I think is um, very well um, ingrained over the years. Yes, uh, because she is very resourceful. Yes. She's kind of all of the things that we've been talking about as far as like not allowing tragedy to define you. Maybe less that one. Less that <laughs> Especially one. Especially <laughs> H2O. <laughs> Girl, did and the you trailer. See H2O? She's got a yeah. drinking problem. You know. She's- we we all we just do the best that we fucking can right um, <laughs> but like uh, being resilient and being clever and being prepared and you know all of those skills kind of are are all embodied in Lori yeah. for me yeah i would totally agree she definitely takes bits and pieces from um what makes other final girls strong and puts them into one body Mm -hmm. and like i can just think of um even like at the end of halloween h2o slash into going into halloween resurrection like she touches on a little bit of that like going crazy you Mm -hmm. know she chopped off who she thought was michael's head or what was michael's head but turns out it wasn't so next time you see her she's in this mental institution and but again, you see, like, she's gone a little crazy, but yet she's still setting booby traps. Like, I don't know. She's just, she's very inspiring, personally. Yeah. I'm inspired by Lori Strode. Yeah, I think she, I think for her, and again, it's kind of similar to um, what we were talking about with Sydney Prescott, where... In the beginning, we see kind of she is painted a little bit in that like virginal goody goody sort of light, mm-hmm. um, but then she gets to evolve. You, there's a little bit of that with Lori, but I think what the first film does a great job of emphasizing is that like Lori, like she 
she's not like perfect and virginal just for the sake of being perfect and virginal. Like she's not, I mean, she smoked some of that joint. Oh yeah, she, she did. she fucking hung out with her friends and like kind of didn't necessarily tell the parents everything. Oh yeah, no, she was down. Yeah, like I feel like she's she's a smart girl who also could party from time to time, right. which I fucking relate to, because right. hello. Yeah, she got that. Um, And then like after having dealing with all of that and then dealing with it again at the hospital and Halloween yeah. too, like yeah. that just shows her resilience. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what makes her number one. And she came in the neck with that fucking uh, knitting needle. Yes, she did. And they still a hole in that mask in the new trailer, girl. Yes, she did. And I'm going to tell you what. And that's, see, and that's the other thing, too. We don't know where this is going. Yeah. So I'm interested to see, like, if, like, I hope it doesn't change too much. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're eliminating all of these sequels. Yeah. So, so we're it's really just, just the first getting one. the first and second one. So you'll first almost get, like, a you'll get two different versions of Laurie Strode. Two, like, alternate timelines, potentially. Yeah, Um, which will be interesting to see. No, I definitely think... I mean, I personally loved the version of her at age zero, because when she's fucking wrapping them chains around those gates, girl... And she breaks, and she smashes the fucking um, glass, gets the fucking axe, and she's like, my God! Come on, bitch. That's my fucking everyday mood. Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> when I wake up every day, I just smash that fucking that. glass, stand there with an axe, and just and just stand there. That's and how you know it's going to be a good week. Yep. When you start your Monday out like that. Yup. <laughs> Come on, week. <laughs> Come on, week. <laughs> so, so, yes. Um, Lori Strode. Number one. The fucking the best queen. ever in our hearts. <laughs> Hashtag the queen. <laughs> Uh, so I do have one question that I want to pose. Sure. Before we get into our sign-offs and everything. Okay. Do you see yourself as a final girl? Bitch, absolutely I do. And I actually have, um, I'm not ready to sign off yet. Um, but I, uh, cause I have a little fun thing for us at the end. Oh, okay. Here. Um, I absolutely fucking see myself as a final girl. Um, I, I'm probably fucking wrong and I would die immediately. Um, But I know, I certainly know, (laughs) I know that I have been inspired by the final girls of horror and, um, you know, they have certainly taught me a lot and been really good role models for me. Um, so I would hope that I could continue to hold the candle myself. How about you? Are you a final girl? Am I a final girl? Um, I'm going to say yes. Okay. I'm going to say yes, because I feel like if put in that situation, I feel like I would go into uh, uh, Sarah mode yeah. <laughs> from The Descent. I think that would be you as a final girl. <laughs> you would survive. Uh, you how would, much I would you. survive, but I would probably like go insane. Yeah. You would be and the I killer think... in the sequel. Oh my God. You would be the final girl who just survives to be the killer in the sequel. Yeah, totally. For sure. Um. One thing that really, yeah, I could just see myself as, like, you just see me in the movie, and I've just fucking lost it, and I'm, mm-hmm. like, in the woods, stripped mm-hmm. naked, covered in mud, like, and I'm just, For like, crouched sure. down, yeah. and you just see my eyes in the darkness. And then I have to come home but the ass out the woods. Also, I think... Get you some help. I'm, and I don't know if I, like, I do this unconsciously, I feel like, but I'm always looking around to know what I can use as a weapon. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, even today, when I was doing the dishes, and we had the fucking uh, turkey thermometer, yeah, um, I was looking at it, and I was like, okay, if I'm ever attacked in this position, that turkey thermometer is going to be there, and I'm, I can jab that in someone's neck. I mean... And I feel like I would just keep going. I wouldn't be that person I that mean, would be like... maybe you should think of a therapist. <laughs> you know? Maybe we should talk about that off air. <laughs> um, yeah, and... I 100% agree with you about that, though, that, like, about being that person who, like, wouldn't stop. I actually am very afraid of that. I would not stop. (laughs) I would just keep going until that motherfucker is dead. Until I hit floor. Yeah. Or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So, I have a fun thing to end on. Okay. Fun things to end on. We love them. So, I have a lovely little um, quiz. An unbranded quiz. Ooh, an that's unbranded gonna, quiz. That's going to tell us uh, what final girl are you. 
Yay! So I'm going to let you answer. Okay. Um, it's 10 questions, so it should go quick. Um, You're so pulling a me. Pick a, que- uh, pick a weapon of choice. Okay. You can choose from a knife, a hanger, a stiletto, or an axe. Um, I'm and you say... have to answer for you. Don't don't pick because some of them it's like kind of clear what movies they came from. Right. With the hanger. Okay. Hanger. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding? Um, I'm gonna say a knife. Okay. Uh, which of these are you most afraid of? Peer pressure, the call from coming inside, the call coming from inside the house, not having a date to prom, or ghosts. The call coming from inside the house. Bitch, yes. <laughs> not having a date to prom? Bitch, I didn't even go to my prom. Because like I didn't that. have a date. <laughs> um, so you can pick between, you're picking a classic teen flick. You can pick between Clueless, The Breakfast Club, Mean Girls, or Not Another Teen Movie. Fucking Mean Girls, man. For sure. Um, pick on up. Wednesdays, we listen to The Haunted Heart. <laughs> on Wednesdays, I listen to The Haunted Heart. I actually like that. I like that a lot, I'm going to name it. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Um, pick an item of clothing. So we have a blue, a navy blue jumpsuit romper looking thing. Uh. <laughs> a fucking black, like, nylon bomber jacket that does not look sexy. Um, a red strapless, like, fucking prom dress. <laughs> that's, like, poofy. Poofy. Black combat boots. Uh, denim cutoffs. A chunky, like, cowl neck sweater that's, like, in a taupe beige color. <laughs> and then, like, this fucking, like, it, rem- it reminds me of, like, secretary shirts from the, like, 50s. It's, like, a see- almost see-through blouse that's ivory, and it ties in a bow at the neck. So we're neck. gonna say an ivory blouse. Are you gonna choose the ivory? No, blouse? hell no. Okay, <laughs> but you said the bomber jacket was not cute. Um, it's like nylon. You can look at it. It's like a little shiny. Like she's not really looking oh, that cute. Um, I'm gonna probably say. I'm probably gonna say the bomber jacket. That's where I'm okay. going to. Okay, maybe that's where I'm going maybe to. you could pull it off. Uh, do you run upstairs or downstairs? It depends on which way the fucking exit is. <laughs> you um, have to pick. I feel like if I had no other way, I would run upstairs. Well, I guess I think it just means like in general, like when you're home alone and you get scared, do you run upstairs or do you run downstairs? Like for me, I always run upstairs. upstairs. I, I literally cannot imagine a time in my life when I ever ran downstairs. Upstairs. Which Hitchcock blonde do you uh, most identify with i'm just gonna fucking answer this question for you because it should be uh, jamie lee's mom fucking yeah duh 100 percent. bye janet lee. janet lee all right what is your theme song doll parts by hole i dreamed a dream from les miserables <laughs> like a virgin by madonna what the fuck is this quiz Work It by Missy Elliott. You remember that song? Yes. Work It. Work it. Work it. Um, Dancing Queen by ABBA. It. <gasps> or Maps by the Yeah, Yeah, Yes. Or, I'm sorry, Yeah, Yeah, Yes. There's no the. Bitch, you know what my answer would be. Um, Show it to me again. Show it to me. Here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to say... I'm going to have to say Work It by Missy Elliott. Okay. <laughs> Mine would definitely be Maps. That was on Rock Band, and I remember in college, I aced, I used to always pick that song. Bitch, I used I to I sing the bop. shit out of that song. I, I turned that all the way up. They don't love you like I love you. I fucking love some Maps. We're going to listen to that in a minute. I used to bump some Missy Elliott. Mm-hmm. I still do. Oh, this one's a picture. Which one of these movie cats would be your pet? They have a bunch of them. Movie cats? You know the the one, the second one with the, yeah. the black cat with like the raging face? <laughs> <It's> fucking mad. <laughs> I think that's Salem, but it's like a real close up like picture of him. I don't fucking understand. Uh, who's your dream boyfriend? Oh my God. <laughs> Michael Fassbender, Idris Elba, John Cho, Zac Efron, Remy Malik, or Oscar Isaac? Uh, out of those, Idris Elba. Girl, yes. Idris Elba, for sure. Yeah, totally. 100%. (laughs) 
Oh my God, this is my favorite question. It says pick a shade of black and then it has four fucking boxes that okay, are Okay, so those all are black. obviously <laughs> different shades. I'm going to go with the blackest black, which is going to be number four. <laughs> I actually love that a lot. Now we have to watch this ad. I don't know what this is for, but it it's this man talking and the word settle just appeared <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> Oh my god, you got Sydney Prescott! Yay! Good job. Awesome. Good job. Sydney. That's awesome. What's your favorite scary movie? Yeah. Alright, so I'll um The copy. one you about to be in, motherfucker. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna um keep a copy of this quiz and I'll post it in the Facebook group for everybody. So um if you listen to the show and you are not part of the Facebook group, you should definitely be part of the Facebook group. It's really cool. Um I just want to say that, um, so there was a post like this past week and everybody was like talking about how grateful they are to have the group to talk to like-minded people and, you know, how they're happy that they've kind of found a place where they can kind of be them mm -hmm. and whatever. And we're just so thankful for that. Um, we're really thankful that you guys listen to the show. We're really thankful that you want to be part of our community and you guys are building the community as much or more than we are. Yeah. And we're just so thankful that somebody listens to our bullshit. Yeah. And I think, you know, we we play a lot, you know, into the idea of like, you know, trash talent and, and all of that. But this, you know, it really does... Uh, I mean, this is a lot of work, and yeah. to see that really just makes it, Worth it. all worthwhile. Yeah. Even, like, I don't, like, care really about downloads uh, or, you know, any of that other bullshit, but, like, just having you guys yeah. and having you be so open uh, and so active and just getting right. to talk with you yeah, uh, and share funny shit with you. Right. Like it really honestly means the world to us because. Yeah. Um, I think we've both at different points in our lives experienced feeling like an outsider. So it's really cool to be building a community with you guys. That's really inclusive. Yeah, and that's totally. Awesome. So totally. thank you for that. Um, and if anybody you who's join not that. listening, yeah, <laughs> anybody who is listening to the show but is not on the Facebook group, it is the fucking best. And you should definitely join. Search the Haunted Heart Podcast on Facebook. It's a closed group, but if you request to join, we will add you. Um, and it's closed so that all your friends and family can't see all the weird shit that we talk about. Um, <laughs> and so that your grandma doesn't have to judge you. Um, we're also on Instagram, the Haunted Heart Podcast. Um, we are on Twitter at the haunted heart. So definitely check in, um, and make sure that you're following our social media because there's actually a lot more content that is going out now, which is great. Yes. <laughs> um, as we're fucking getting our shit together. So yeah. Yes. And, uh, take a look at our Patreon if you wish to support us. Uh, we really appreciate that as well. Just search, uh, the haunted heart podcast on patreon yes or you um, can go to patreon.com um slash the haunted heart podcast yes we have some really cool tiers on there you get a bunch of cool stuff and uh we post a lot of extra like bonus stuff for you guys there and that's a great way to support us too yes um, every dollar really helps us keep this going and if you can't i mean that's totally cool we get it uh, but there um, are free ways that you can yes, support us. There like are free ways. Reviewing on iTunes, dropping a five star review. Um, yeah, reviewing on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, wherever you li you listen to podcasts. And just and are sharing able to us, review. really, like sending yeah. us to your friends and shit. Yeah, like those are all free ways that really helps us out uh, and gets the haunted heart out there. Yeah. So I think that's it for this episode. Then I think so. we need to get better at ending this fucking show. I feel like we're just like, okay, bye. That's the end. But okay, seriously, guys, bye. thank you so much for listening to us this evening. We hope you enjoy your night or your day, wherever you're, whenever you're listening. And as always, stay, stay spooky. spooky.